In a previous video, I showed how to install IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition and create a very simple Java project. Now, one of the first things that we're going to want to do when we start a project is commit it to version control. That gives us the ability to do commits and pushes, where a commit is kind of like a rollback point, kind of like a control Z. You can go back there at a point in time if needed. So version control also helps us with teamwork. So in this video, let's see how we can wire this project up to version control. From IntelliJ IDEA, I'm going to choose VCS, and I'm going to choose Share Project on GitHub. And we'll simply say a demonstration of OO object oriented concepts. And share. Now, you notice when I try to share, it says account cannot be empty, and it gives me an option here uh, to add an account. Login via GitHub, there's a known issue with that where that does not work. It opens up a browser and either it keeps spinning or it just times out. So we have to log in with token, which is just a little bit tricky because we have to go to GitHub to do this. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to navigate to my own GitHub account. And I'm already logged in, so if you haven't done so already, create an account, log in. Note that I have 63 repositories. That'll be important in just one moment. But for now, let's click down and go to Settings, which I realize my camera obscured that a bit. And then we're going to go to Developer Settings. And then we're going to go to Personal Access Tokens. And we're going to say Generate New Token. Uh, we'll say this is for... IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. <coughs> I'll say no expiration. We'll give it a few scopes here. Repo, admin, read, org, and gist are fairly common. And then I'll say generate token. So it gives me a token. I copy it. Return to IntelliJ IDEA and choose add uh, login with token and choose add account. And now you see it knows who I am because I've used that token, and now I can choose share. Look at the bottom, creating GitHub repository, creating empty Git repository, adding GitHub as a remote host. And now it says, okay, well, I see that you have this project with these files. Do you want to go ahead and commit them? Uh, I, I, generally, yes. And one thing I notice I need right now is, is something called a .gitignore file, because there are certain files that we do not want to commit to GitHub. And I noticed that some of those files are in this list. First of all, anything that's specific to our local running environment, so anything that has a directory that's specific to your uh, laptop, your Mac, your PC, whatever you're using is one. Uh, secondly, compiled files should not be committed and pushed to GitHub uh, because you can always regenerate them. And if you make one little change to source code, the entire compiled file will change, and then GitHub will say, uh-oh, lots of changes. I don't know how to merge these. So actually, before I go too far, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. And uh, yeah, there we go. As a matter of fact, it looks like it created a gitignore for us, which is handy. I was about to go create one. Uh, you see, the gitignore file says these are the things that should not be pushed to version control. There's a neat trick with this, though. You can go to gitignore.io. And you can tell it what type of project you're using. So I can say Java, and I can say IntelliJ, IDEA. Uh, Java and IntelliJ should be fine. This is a pretty straightforward project. And it generates for us a git ignore file that has all of the things that should not be pushed to version control, uh, specific not just for our basic Java project, but also for IntelliJ. So I'm going to go back to git ignore, and you see right now there's just not a whole lot there. I'm going to paste in what was given to me by that gitignore.io. Let's try to add this project to git again. So I right click, and I choose git, and we choose add. Right click, git, and let's choose commit, commit directory. Now if you take a look at this, uh, if you rewind the recording a little bit, you'll notice that there are several files that have been removed here. There used to be a main.class, there used to be an IML file. Those are all things that should not be pushed to GitHub, 
and indeed they are excluded in our get ignore file. So I bet you if I search on dot class, yeah, there we go. You see it's excluding anything with the dot class extension, with the dot log extension, we wouldn't want to push that either, and uh, anything with an IML extension as well, uh, some of the GitHub specific things. So I'm going to say initial commit, and let's go ahead and do commit and push. And we see master, origin master. Now, what do these things mean? Master is the branch that I'm currently working with. In Git, GitHub, we work with branches, which I'll explain more in a future video. But think about like that like parallel development. I will say the name master is getting deprecated. You're more than likely to hear the word main going forward. But nonetheless, this is set to master. You could change it to main if you want. Uh, also, there's something called origin here. And that refers to github.com where we're pushing this code in this specific repository. You can have multiple remotes, as we call them, multiple repositories, and each one would have a different name. So we're pushing the master branch to the origin repo, and we are including these files. And I go ahead and choose push. And you can see down here that it's going to push. As soon as that push is complete, we go back to GitHub, and do you see something different here? Remember when I said, remember that number 63? You notice now we have 64 repositories. And notice there's a new one called Vehicles, and Programming Language Java updated 39 seconds ago. And if we take a look here, we can see a very similar directory structure here as we see in IntelliJ IDEA. The only thing is that GitHub only contains the files that we wish to push to GitHub, not the compiled files, not the things that are specific to our computer, because we took those out in that gitignore.io. So this is just a, a really quick introduction to how to push a project onto GitHub for the first time. And I want to cover it early because it is so important that we build good habits by having GitHub as our, uh, our central version of truth. And frankly, if you're learning things or if you're a professional software developer, GitHub's your resume as well. It's where you can go to demonstrate the work that you've done. Let's get started building these best practices early. And then those will be with us for the rest of our software development career. So I hope you found this video helpful. And as always, I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.